reactions usually have some change in energy. Either as a reaction progresses, energy is uh, produced by the reaction or energy is absorbed by the reaction. In reactions, old bonds break and new bonds form. Breaking old bonds requires that the molecules pull energy in or that something outside the molecules puts energy in. When new bonds form, energy is put out. The difference gives a change in heat. You can either have heat being absorbed or heat being produced. We call this the enthalpy of a reaction. The enthalpy of a reaction is the change in the amount of internal energy. Some reactions actually lose internal energy, so they give off that energy as heat. These are called exothermic reactions. Some reactions increase their internal energy. When they increase that internal energy, they have to take heat from the surroundings and put them inside themselves. This is called an endothermic reaction. This is an example of an exothermic reaction. We can take propane and combust it. When propane is combusted, it produces carbon dioxide and water and heat, as you probably know from gas stoves or gas heaters that use propane. The temperature rises because internal energy is coming out of the molecules. The potential energy of the bonds in the molecules drops, and so the kinetic energy must increase. That means temperature rises. The result of this reaction is that the potential energy of the molecules drops. That means the bonds in the products are stronger than those in the reagents. In any exothermic reaction, you have this occur. In an exothermic reaction, the internal energy, the potential energy of the bonds, drops, and the external energy, the kinetic energy of the molecules, rises. Because kinetic energy is rising, temperature rises. What results as a uh, in the change in energy of the molecules for that potential energy to come out as kinetic energy, the strength of the bonds increases because they're dropping in energy.
Now, this transition state is at the peak of this curve here. This curve is showing energy going up, which is the breaking of bonds, and then energy coming down, which is the formation of bonds. The difference between the reactants and the top of this curve is called the activation energy, and at the top of that curve is where the transition state is. The drop in energy between the reactants down to the product, that's the heat released by this exothermic reaction. Then right here, the, we see that because the potential energy is dropping, we're going from an unstable high energy state at the reactants to a lower energy, more stable state of the products. The unstable state of the reactants has weaker bonds, that's why it's unstable, and the stable state of the products, it has much stronger bonds, that's why it is more stable. There are other reactions in which they are endothermic. In this reaction, you can see that heat is being absorbed by the reactants to form the products. It is called an endothermic reaction. In an endothermic reaction, you have heat being absorbed as a reaction occurs, so the temperature of the system drops. The potential energy of the bonds in the molecules rises as you uh, conduct the reaction. So the potential energy of the products is higher than that of the reactants. This means that the bonds in the products are weaker and more unstable than the bonds of the reagents. We can look at the energy changes with an endothermic reaction also. On the y-axis is the potential energy, the stored energy, and on the x-axis is the progress of the reaction. The reactants are at a lower energy than the products because energy is being put into the products as a reaction proceeds. So kinetic energy is being changed to potential energy and being stored in the products. There is an activation energy here, a hump that of energy that is between the reactants and the products. So bonds have to be broken going up to the transition state before new bonds are formed going down to the products. The difference between the reactants and the transition state is called the activation energy. These activation energies are very important because the activation energy keeps all reactions from occurring all at once. So it's a barrier to the reactions going forward. These make it so that reactions are controlled. If the activation energy is very high, then it requires a lot of energy for the reactants to go over and become products. If the activation energy is very low, then it takes very little energy for the reactants to go to the products. So this energy here is very, very important. Now. The difference in energy between the reactants and products is called the heat of reaction, or the enthalpy of reaction. This is the amount of heat that is absorbed by the reactants to become the products. Remember, heat is being put in it into, or energy is being put into the reactants to make the products because it's an endothermic reaction. So the temperature of a reaction as it proceeds actually drops because kinetic energy is being changed to potential energy. Notice the reactants are at a lower energy, they're more stable, and so they have stronger bonds. The products are at a higher energy, they're less stable, so they have weaker bonds. Well, this activation energy is very important to the progress of reactions because it's basically the energy hump that determines the rate of the reaction. New bonds will form, but the old bonds have to be broken first, and this requires an input of energy. If you have a very high activation energy, activation energy is given this symbol, E sub A, 
if your activation energy is very high, very few molecules have enough energy to get over that energy hump. And so the reaction is slow. Few molecules will progress to the products. However, if your activation energy is low, more molecules will be having enough energy, they will be fast enough, to get over that energy hump. And so many more re molecules will react in the reaction, and we say the reaction is fast. The rate of reaction is determined by a number of things, including the number of collision, how fast they are hitting each other, and then the energy hump, the activation energy. As we've seen, the higher the activation energy is, the slower the reaction. The temperature will determine how fast the molecules are moving. This will do two things. One, high, uh, molecules that are moving faster have more energy and so they are more likely to be able to go over the activation energy hump. But also, as temperature increases, you have more molecules colliding, so you have more chances for the reactions to occur. Also, if your concentration increases, the number of molecules colliding increases, so you have more collisions, more chances for a reaction to, uh, to occur. So three important factors here determine how fast your reaction is. Your activation energy, your temperature, and then the concentration of your molecules. Catalysts are another uh, uh, important factor in reactions. They participate in reactions but are unchanged after the reaction is complete. They may change while the reaction is ongoing, but after the reaction is complete, they're back at the original state they were before the reaction occurred. They change how reactions occur by lowering the activation energy. Because a catalyst will lower the activation energy, the reaction is faster. To test your understanding of the principles that we just covered, I'd like you to pause the lecture Go ahead and try these problems and then press resume when you are finished. So which reaction is faster? If I look at 25 degrees Celsius or 37 degrees Celsius, I know that molecules will move faster at 37 degrees Celsius. They have more energy and so they're more likely to be able to go over uh, the activation hump, activation energy barrier. So the higher temperature will allow a reaction to go faster. If I look at the concentrations given, and you don't really understand these expressions yet, but you can see that the concentration of 1m, or what we call 1 molar, is a bigger number than 0.25 molar. Because the concentration of 1 molar is higher, the reaction would be faster we'll be looking at molarity in a future chapter. Reaction profile, this is the uh, energy uh, profile that we looked with for an exothermic and endothermic reaction. We can see that this first curve is for an exothermic reaction and the second curve is for an endothermic reaction. However, being exothermic or endothermic has nothing to do with how fast a reaction will go. A reaction speed forward to the product is determined by the activation energy. If I look at the exothermic reaction right here, I can see that its activation energy is larger than that of the endothermic reaction. It's a smaller amount. So this reaction has a smaller activation energy so it is faster.